Hello, everyone. Like Angelina said, I'm, my name is Alexander Andrevich. Uh, I'm coming from uh, Belgrade, Serbia, but I'm originally from the town of Niš that you most, I think, you heard of if it's up a part of Serbia. Uh, I'm uh, primarily a back-end developer. I'm currently working at a company called Folk Matic in Belgrade. Uh, we are a company that is based from Copenhagen and we have uh, offices in Belgrade and recently in Berlin. Uh, like I said, I'm primarily back-end developer, but I'm also uh, thinking about going full stack uh, with front-end and I'm taking also interest in, in mobile applications. So, uh, I'm, worked with, uh, I'm working with WordPress for almost three years and I work with other WordPress developers in a bunch of teams, plugins, writing projects uh, inherited from, from other companies, from clients. And I saw there are different organization rules and structures of how projects are handled. And uh, from most of what I saw, they're just like too complicated for me. I'm always striving towards simplicity if in everything that I'm doing in personal or professional life. And I came up with some organizational structure with how should I run WordPress projects at least from my side. And if you like them, what we are going to see right now, maybe you will adopt them too. So, but before we begin, I know that uh, most of the developers were given a talk, like to ask the audience on the start, like uh, how much of you are using this technology, how much you're using that technology, how much you're into WordPress even. Uh, I don't want to do that now because uh, I'm presuming since you are here that you either using WordPress on your daily level or you're planning to give it a try. Seeing you this in this number, I know that there are many of you from both sides and that makes me very happy. So, <coughs> with every project workflow, we usually start by the project idea or pitch for some project. So, for a com if, if you are a company or a developer, uh, you are send requests or you find work or whatever so for some project. And then you find out, you need to find out some basic information about the client that you are doing, that you are doing for. And uh, by working on more and more projects, you'll find out that if you work on similar projects for companies that have like similar business or some other agenda, you fi will find out that more in time time you will uh, be a better in understanding uh, what exactly the client needs and you will be better prepared the next time when you're like given a project that is similar in business for, for that one. So it's always a good idea to research what exactly the business is all about the client that you're building a website. After the project or has been approved, uh, the team that is behind like a functional specification team or something is, can uh, do a basic UX of site or mockups, wireframes. And after that, it's basically transferred to the designer to make a design based on that. So it depends on how much time do you have. Some of, some of developers or um, those who are doing the functional specification or mockups or, or designers go straight to the design, ignoring completely the UX part of mockups, that side. Uh, I strongly recommend if you have time to do a basic uh, UX for any project you're doing, not just WordPress because it will help you better to understand the, all the functionalities and the site components that uh, will exist on, on WordPress site that you are building 
and it will help the developers uh, that you are handling the project, uh, the project for UX, to better understand uh, which, uh, what that components should actually do. So that's that's very 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 important for them, and it will. Um, uh, I don't know exactly the term. It will uh, let, uh, it will be given less time to problems afterwards that may arise because of the bad bad specification. And of course, after that, there is a design. There is not much said there. And after the design has been approved, there basically start with development. And development usually starts front-end part. So you basically want to write front-end and then you start and you're doing that by coding directly in team files. But soon you find problems and hit the wall with like quality assurance team, uh, project management or even clients that <laughs> usually like to test things even before they are not even complete. So, how to overcome how to overcome this? You can do this by uh, coding all of your pages from UE that is that is approved, like static pages, like static HTML. The way you call it is irrelevant. You call it like uh, HTML, or you use some templating engine. It doesn't matter. But once you code it, you send that to approval to the quality assurance the designer and even even a client, and once that is approved, you have a clean code that you can then transfer to eventual backend implementation. So that's also reducing time needed for additional testing or whatever. Of course, testing will always be needed, but it will, it will reduce time for that. And of course, there are like testing that can be tester client and even maybe audience feedback depends on the project you're doing the client may evolve potential audience in that. After the audience has, uh, after the testing has been uh, received feedback, there's of course more development because there will always, always going to be some bugs, uh, changing requests, uh, some, something else, but that's all the development process. Once you're done with that, then it's time to put the project on life. And after that, if it's all okay, you will start, fortunately, project care program, client like solving bugs, new requests, administration of that project, etc., etc. If client, of course, wants to give you green light, green light to that. So, when you basically start project by uh, things you see that there is in uh, UX and UI, you usually started by choosing team for, for WordPress. And there you have three variants of team. So you, have a, you can get a free team, either from WordPress repository or some other resources. You can get a uh, commercial team, or you can code it from scratch, so a custom team. All three variants have some pros and cons in, choos in choosing them. So, for example, a free team Basic, uh, process just it's free, easy ma maintenance, and usually is if from WordPress repository, it's reviewed by WordPress community team by team re reviewing team. But cons, uh, there is little lack, no support for from, for free teams. You can get like paid support. Lack of custom functionalities because most of the teams are uh, light on light on functionalities, and updates are not regular over time. And trust me on this, they're not. <laughs> so for paid team, of course you get support, new updates regular, and it's developed by professional company or individual. So those are basically pros, pros for that cons. Uh, custom functionality is not always on time because um, the developer or, a co or a company that is behind that team is sometimes uh, 
waiting for more audience feedback or more requests to actually implement something to team and give it to the all of the customers. So that, that maybe some, took some time. Uh, if that team is, is using some kind of framework or some kind of uh, custom frameworks you don't know anything about and you want to change something, you need time to learn those things if you're choosing like different team all the time and you haven't worked with that before. And uh, sometimes it's too much code just in team, things that you don't need. So I don't say that it is slowing down maybe a team, but it's definitely one of the, one of the cons for chasing it. And of course, you can build a custom team. So pros for that, you can just write what you want. Less code uh, using, of course. You can use it on mul multiple places. It's more adaptive. And you can, of course, reuse the code that you write because you know that you write that code and you know that the best from, from other people. Uh, cons for choosing a custom, uh, custom team is usually little time invested in review because if you're not planning to sell that team to other clients, but you're calling custom for one client, uh, there is a little, a little time invested in quality assurance basically on that, uh, on that code because it's just for that client, it's not going to go for, for, other, for others. And of course, some things you, you must write from scratch because it's custom teams. So either you write them or find some functionalities on the internet or read through WordPress documentation. And of course, after choosing team, you are all, all eager to install some plugins and uh, buy what exactly that site is going to interact and do. Uh, you choose some plugins, you find even like commercial ones or free on the WordPress repository, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, there are some plugins that uh, will help you on your daily level, like you see here, and you're probably most familiar with, with all of them, but we're just going to mention. They are not must-have, but they will, they will help you, help you a lot. To, to overcome some problems if you hit if you hit the wall, and first of all, I want to uh, say about the Jetpack. Now I see that I work on many many WordPress projects, uh, but like I said, the, like I saw it. Sorry, maybe on, on on from I don't know 100 projects, I saw like on five places the people using Jetpack, and I don't know if people don't exactly know what the jetpacks exactly do, but here are some things. So with the jetpacks, you can, in a free version, get website stats, you get CDN, uh, 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 basic uh, brute force attacks protection, uh, two-way factor authentication, uh, related post sharing buttons for social media, all that is included in the jetpack by free. So you don't need any, any other functionalities to like install special plugins or something else. You can all that find in, in Jetpack, so give it a try. Of course, there's a advanced custom fields. I think most of us have, have used it over the times. I use it on a, day, on a daily level, and it's just like super, super, super plugin that is used for uh, adding uh, meta boxes with easiness. Regenerate thumbnails, of course, if you're adding new image sizes, you need to regenerate thumbnails over, over time. Yoast cell for basic cell optimization site. And battery total cache or any other cache plugin light for, for caching pages, assets, and et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you will find out that when developer you know, of course need uh, development environments or staging environments or production environments where you want to put your website. So those basically are these three environments that you're going to use on their level. There are some recommendations that I'd like to mention why, uh, what things you, you can try to make your life easier and time less 
for uh, for developing on these different environments. So, for local development, development environment, uh, try Vagrant or Docker. They're basically Vagrant is basically a virtual machine. Uh, Docker is a, a little different. It's a development environment for uh, for for projects, and uh, you're sure that all other devel uh, developers in team will have the same development environment, you just, you just pass it to, to, other, to other developers and they have like virtual machines, they don't have to worry about uh, why this is not working on like, for example, Apache version this or PHP version this. They all have same environments and it will make debugging, debugging of, uh, of things uh, less, Less to worry. Staging environment. Now, this is maybe wrong, but I like to do it. Uh, recommended, as some rule, I stick that it is, it's going to be on the same server that um, is production environment also. Why is that? Because primarily in the matter of speed. So the client, if you're developing some new functionality, Will, and uh, the client is complaining, oh, like uh, this functionality is much, much faster on uh, production than staging because like staging is on other server. If you have on the same server staging in production environment, then the speed is the same. The server resources are the same. So the client can't complain about that. Uh, production environment, I recommend you uh, choose manage WordPress instances by hosting components, but uh, only if you're sure that they are good and you will not need anything beyond that. Uh, so do a research if you're not using any like hosting components that do a manage web, uh, WordPress uh, handling services. Uh, do a research and do reviews on which company you should choose. Uh, if it's a project that uh, it's not going to be uh, handled by managed uh, manage the WordPress, WordPress company that is doing, but from the like you want to start it on separate VPS or uh, system web that is a new that is a new server. Uh, ask some professional company or administrator to do it for you if you don't have experience in it. Developers usually think that they can set up this, uh, servers to be like 100 performance ready on server side for not just, not just WordPress projects, but uh, for any, any projects. And trust me, they are not. I know that I cannot set up server as good as uh, some system, system owner, professional system owner. So my recommendation is to either hire a company or someone to do it, to do it for you. And then we are, when we are ready with our uh, server infrastructure, there, uh, of course, we instance a WordPress project. Installation is a breeze. It's a famous five-minute five installation, either on non-virtual non machine. And uh, there are some couple of things you should consider after immediately installing uh, the WordPress or, sorry, while installing WordPress. Like, for example, change the default VP table slack. It's never too early for security, and one thing that uh, hackers are only into about, it's like, okay, I'm having a WordPress database, and I know exactly what are the prefixes for that database. Change them and beat them in their game. Uh, HTTP password protection for staging site. Now, why this is important? Um, you will avoid duplicate content and bad SEO from crawly websites because you will have content on uh, staging instance, for example, the client has like uh, enter content here and then you tr you, when site is put in production, you need to transfer it to live, but it just hang in there. So uh, protect your site by HTTP, not just for content, but for security measures. And web crawlers will not index, not index your site, or you can use option in WordPress to disable indexing for staging. And protect uh, VP admin 
area, either by HTTP protection or some rewrite rules. It's basically all in the matter of security. So, the modern software de development can be quite imagined with some type of subversion control. And you, and you as a developer will probably, will probably use it when you're doing WordPress projects. So, uh, there are some recommendations on how exactly should you, not just in WordPress projects, but in any other projects. The, uh, for uh, for a development, uh, which type of branches, either if you're using like uh, Git or CVNE, uh, what branches should you keep, like basic branches for that development? So you like have a master branch when all all that code is developed. You have like for example staging, when something is uh, done on master, you will transfer it to staging branch. And if it is approved, then you transfer it to production. Uh, that's one way to do that workflow. The other way is to ignore completely like staging branch uh, because I don't know, there is maybe no need uh, if something is a master branch, there is certainly 100% is going to finish on staging. So for staging, you can also use master branch and for production, you, you of course use the production branch. Whatever you choose, the choice the choice is on you. And there is one thing that I saw in many many WordPress projects uh, that have some subversion control, is that uh, people think that it is a good idea to keep all WordPress files in uh, in subversion. Please don't do that. So. Uh, there is actually no need to do that. Whatever you're changing, like uh, in team or plugin, it will kept there. There is nothing. There is nothing to change outside of those directories, except maybe a plot, but that is on uh, on file sides, so that the files that are uploaded. So just just ignore it. So on Git or Sylvana, you keep just team or custom plugin if if you build one. So if you're choosing like custom team for your projects, there's some things you may consider before before going uh, to write it from scratch. You're so eager to write, to write it like, yeah, I'm writing custom team. But before that, uh, check some boilerplates boiler maybe that are uh, like best practices uh, for, for writing team and underscores underscores that me is like uh, super super for that it's managed by many many people that make sure that that that, that team is with WordPress coding, coding standard standards uh, of course team should be only used for reading and visualization of data anything you need to like uh, for any crude operations creating reading or relating data should be handled by custom plugin or any, any other plugin you choose. Only use what you need in team. It matters you to add some functionality uh, then clean, uh, that you need, then clean uh, those that you don't. JS, CSS, assets, static Im images, files in general. For both development and production, just define it. You can define it with VP config, for example. That file is created on a WordPress instance, it's not going to be uh, transferred like on Git when you do deployments, it should not be changed. And you can like define in VP config uh, this instance is using uh, this set, set of assets and that instance is using set of assets. So you can use it uh, like in when you, if you're building with uh, Galt, for example, you can define it there, the choice, the choice is yours. Uh, if you're doing coding in team, code with option for the uh, VP debug set to true. It will uh, let you know your mistakes early so you can fix them uh, on time and uh, it will make you better developer to know 
to exactly what, what we are doing. Uh, choose some team options. Class, uh, it's easy, pretty easy to add team, team options. And if you don't have one, I will share one with you. This is not, uh -huh. If you're needing building custom plugin, of course, before thinking about building custom plugin, choose amongst like, like uh, 53,000 plus certainty that there are in WordPress repository. Maybe there are more. I'm, I'm not quite sure. When I made the presentation, there was like 53,000 plus. To see if there's someone that will fit your needs for, uh, for solution you're working on. If you can't find a one, but there is one with slight modification, we'll do the job for you, fork it and modify it, either with files or by extending it to hooks, of course, if the plugin li license allows you, but <laughs> most plugins on, on the WordPress repository allows it. Uh, if needed writing from scratch, uh, look first at some boilerplates. I use, for example, Dan Vinson WordPress plugin boilerplate for about two years, and it's super awesome, easy to learn with best practices writing plugin. So I recommend if you're needing writing custom plugin, should look into that. Of course, you can also look at some other popular, popular plugins for best practices to see how they're uh, implemented stuff. And of course, uh, stick closely to WordPress codecs. Uh, in team assets, when bundling them, you can use tools you're most familiar with this one, like Gulp, Webpack, or Yeemon. Uh, it, will make, it will make handling assets much, much easier than one uh, thinking about where they, uh, where they are, why they're not minified, etc., etc. For example, JS or, t or CSS. Uh, some recommendation, of course, is that static images that you're using in your team or a plugin should be compressed. Uh, you can use tools like Google Page Speed Insights uh, to download the compressed versions of those images. Not just like Google Speed Pages Insights is going to uh, fix all your problems. The problems with speed are definitely you need to look that um, either on server or team or plugin or database, so, but it's a, it's a good tool for, uh, for combining like uh, minified, minified version of assets if you don't use bundling, for example. Uh, of course, custom JavaScript CSS files should be always minified in production, and we always uh, have separate versions for development and production, use concatenation, minified version, et cetera. And of course, always load. I've seen many, many times that people are still loading uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS even images uh, through like uh, normally how they'll do it in HTML or, or PHP. Uh, use functions for, for loading them, default, default WordPress functions you can see here. And once your project is, of course, given a green light, put it in the deployment, there are a couple of things you should also do. Prepare your server, or I'm repeating once again, if you're not sure how, go with managed one. For sites that may handle bigger traffic, or you may consider VPS server, dedicated cloud, whatever, handled by professional system administrators. Of course, you will install fresh copy of WordPress in your server, you set up a version control if you, if you need one. If not, you will transfer uh, your team and eventually custom plugins manually by plugging them to AFT, FTP. And this is why it's important to not to keep uh, anything beside the WordPress team that you are using and custom <coughs> plugins on version control, you are always assured that any development you have done on your local computer staging, whatever, you are always sure that you need to transfer only plugin 
custom plugin directory of WordPress team to the server and nothing else, and that you make sure that you don't forget anything, anything top of, except maybe uh, uploads uh, directory that uh, maybe client added on staging or something like that. Like right in here, transfer your event to files that you find in your upload directory. Of uh, and after that, you need to migrate your development database to production, make changes regarding site rule and other paths in database you done. Or you can just use some of, some of those. So there is like uh, plugins, duplicator, with migrate DB on one of the migration. Give it a try. I personally use the, uh, the one in the middle, VP migrate DB. It's awesome and it's finished jobs like this. And after launch of the site, you're of course going to be doing backup and maintenance. And uh, the best advice is someone given to me about WordPress, uh, but I forgot who and I feel e even remember I'm going to buy him beer. Uh, it's to keep it updated. So there are like, so many people are working on WordPress core and making sure that with all new versions there are less bugs, more fixes, etc., etc. So please keep it updated. Keep, of course, plugins, themes, and translations also updated. Uh, make sure that your um, uh, server hardware is scalable according to your web uh, visits and server usage. If needed, you will, if like in some uh, VPS, you will have to increase it over time. Uh, track logs for errors, does uh, attack patterns, brute force attacks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it will it will let you know what uh, what things you should need, you need to done to protect your WordPress instance. Optimize your database for better performance. Better said, optimize your database server for be for better performance. Uh, keep track of no working links for four pages, of course, to see why they are not working and why there is not content on them. Uh, regenerate team sizes over time if new sizes are added. And uh, the last thing is, of course, backup, which I also saw in many projects. There are like no backup mechanism. There is like no service side backup, no like IOS services, uh, plugin for backup, et cetera. So please, backup is a golden thing when, when it's done, not just for WordPress, but any kind, any kind of project. And there's a, I can emphasize enough about security that you need to care about your site. It's all, uh, not, not good things when like it happens uh, your site got hacked or something like that. And, uh, but you think about, oh, man, I better bet uh, invest a little more in security to protect it. It's not a great thing either for you, either for a client to see that that site got hacked. And sometimes <laughs> I'm annoyed by someone who said that uh, even if he taken all the security measures, uh, like, knowing why my site is 100% uh, protected from all the attacks. I just remembering, I remember the line from this guy. His name is Damien Scott, and if you're a little into TV shows, you might find him familiar. And he had a line that said like, in my experience, nothing is impenetrable. So the next time you get annoyed by someone who said that they're protected their site 100%, just use this. And you're probably asking why the title of this lecture is called Handling WordPress Projects Begin to Infinity. If you are a little inexperienced and all just starting like as a developer or something, you will probably start worrying over time like, that you're not going to finish things, things on time, I'm under pressure by bosses, by clients, by et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but don't, don't take it, don't take it hard. By time, by working with more and more projects, 
you will find out uh, that you will be better in your job. And that's by making experience. Experience is a great thing. And over time, you will start, start less to worry and start more to care about what you're doing. And if you're caring about some project, uh, that like you're into care project for some client, uh, and like if you even build that project, and the client said, "Oh, these guys are you're you're great. Let's let's continue our um, development agreement with with care." Uh, you will find out that you're going to like it eventually, and. Uh, in the end, when you start caring about something uh, that you made built, you will start to enjoy it, even if it's a WordPress project, anything else. So I'm saying no to infinity worrying. I say yes to infinity enjoy on working with WordPress or any other project. You can find this presentation here, if you like, or I can I can send it to you. Yes. And that's it.